Hello and welcome to lecture 21 as we examine 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished on the truths of the faith, and of the good teaching that you have followed. It's interesting here, be very clear that obviously what is being spoken of is an abandonment of the faith. So these individuals were Christians, they were followers of the truth, but because of false teachings uh, arising from uh, spirits and demons, uh, they have abandoned the one truth. And they did that through their actions. Um, so verse 3 talks about uh, forbidding people to marry, uh, ordering them to abstain from certain foods. Uh, we do note that uh, these are indications of false teachings and things that we have seen, of course, within the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, they forbid priests to marry. Uh, nowhere is that uh, uh, anywhere in the New Testament. That's something that comes from the church, the Catholic Church, uh, and not from God. And certainly you are aware of their um, command to abstain from certain foods, such as eating meat on Friday. Taught by demons. What is exactly is, is meant here? We're not quite sure. Obviously, think of Ephesians. Uh, where Paul talks about uh, our battles are spiritual in nature. We know that the original lies that came into this world were by the devil himself, questioning what God had laid out uh, as far as boundaries for Adam and Eve. Uh, but nevertheless, even today, there is a spiritual element of, of warfare, and Christians have to be aware of this. Uh, in verse 6 here, uh, of course, this is Paul talking about Timothy uh, being a good minister, a good servant of Jesus Christ. Uh, and he's doing that. Timothy would be a good minister if he is pointing out these false teachings and these false practices. And so an element of good ministry is not only teaching the right things, but encouraging people to live out the right things according to the gospel. Verses 7 through 16. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Train yourself. It's kind of an interesting word in the Greek. Um, gymnasio, gymnazo talks about uh, training. Of course, that's where we get the word for gymnasium. And we think about that uh, physical training. Think about lifting weights or running, uh, being on a treadmill, all of these different things. It's easy, isn't it, to understand what physical body training looks like. Uh, and it's easy to put together a program for that. 
But here, what Paul is talking about is training oneself to be godly. That's something we don't really spend a lot of time uh, talking about. And so that is something we can unpack a little bit. What kinds of things do we do to strengthen our spirits, to strengthen our faith? Verse uh, 10 is interesting, uh, just so there's no misunderstanding. Uh, the living God who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. This is touching on that doctrine of objective justification, which simply means that when Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, he did just that. Jesus really did pay for the sins of all people. And we could say that the entire world is indeed forgiven, but people have to have that personal faith or that subjective justification. In other words, only those who believe, only those who have that real saving faith and that living trust actually receive the benefits of what J Jesus accomplished uh, for the whole world on the cross. So while this teaching can be greatly misunderstood, it would be right to say that everybody who is in hell had their sins forgiven, and that's one of the heartbreaking things of hell. Jesus died for all of them, but they're in hell because they lack that saving faith in Jesus. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Uh, do you believe that there are times when individuals will look at a pastor and judge the pastor not so much on uh, what they say, but maybe on, on how they look or their age? Do you think it is right that maybe young pastors are treated with a little bit less respect in, in certain circumstances than older pastors? Uh, is age just something that qualifies oneself to be uh, deserving of respect? Something we can talk about uh, in class together. Verse 13 simply is about uh, the official work of Timothy as a pastor within a congregation. The public reading of scripture is what we would do on Sunday with our, our church uh, readings. And then, of course, there's a, a preaching, a preaching on a selected text, and then uh, a teaching that happens within the congregation itself. Verse 14 talks about that time when Timothy was ordained for ministry. That's the, uh, the gift, the gift of uh, the call into the public ministry that happened um, for Timothy by a laying on of hands of people. We do that today when a pastor is ordained uh, and installed in a congregation. Other pastors will lay their hands on him and often speak a word, a, a Bible verse and so forth and, and have a prayer. Ordination is not something that is commanded, uh, but it is something that is a tradition within the Christian church. And then lastly, Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And so that is the, uh, the great call of the Christian pastor. Persevering in the truth, watching uh, one's life, watching one's doctrine, but also being a good, faithful shepherd, watching the individuals within your congregation if they are straying if they are slipping into false doctrine. The real danger here, of course, is that one can abandon the faith. What we saw at the beginning of this chapter, people can leave salvation. People can be saved, and then they can throw away that gift of salvation. And this is what a pastor is called to guard and protect their flock from doing. So some questions for our discussion. What false teachings are the reason most people give if they leave that is truly abandon or reject the church? So I'm speaking about people that actually leave Christianity and not just leave one Christian congregation for another. Number two, do we take seriously the threat of the unseen realm in the areas of doctrine and practice within the church? Three, 
What do you think spiritual training looks like and includes? And then our final question, do most Lutherans understand and believe that people can fall away from faith? Thank you for your time and have a blessed day.